I want to talk about uh, communication that connects. Would you say that with me? Communication that connects. Yeah, yeah, communication that connects. Everyone communicates, but not everyone connects. And the question we all have to ask ourselves is, are we communicating in a way that connects with our audience? And so there's kind of three things I want to share today, and I'm going to share it up front, and then I'll dig into it a little deeper. But basically, we have to communicate with clarity, we have to communicate with creativity, and we have to communicate for change and lasting impact. So would you do me a favor? Would you say that with me? Would you just say clarity? Yeah, that's number one. We have to communicate with clarity. Number two, would you say creativity? We have to communicate with creativity. And number three, we have to communicate for change and lasting impact. Look to your neighbor and say, communicate for change. So I want to I wanna begin like this. Um, when you think about communicating, we need to have communication that connects. And the question is, as we communicate, are we communicating in a way that connects with the people that God has called us to reach. A lot of times when we communicate, we're communicating to our internal audience as Seventh-day Adventist communicators. So we have to ask ourselves the question, are we communicating to uh, just the people we're trying to keep or the people God has called us to reach? In other words, when we stand up front in a local church, for example, I remember as a pastor, I used to tell my members, if you stand up front in a local church, don't make an announcement and say, hey, everyone, we have our Pathfinders meeting uh, this evening. Come out and support our Pathfinders. Don't just say Pathfinders because a unchurched person sitting in your congregation is saying, Pathfinders? What's that? I mean, I know there's a Nissan Pathfinder, um, are we going on a path and trying to find, is this a hike? Is this a trail? Like, what is Pathfinders? So you've got to add to that thinking about an unchurched person that doesn't know anything about Pathfinders and say, yes, come and support our Pathfinders. And in case you're wondering, Pathfinders is a Christian Boy Scout-like, Girl Scout-like organization that teaches Christian values. And if you're a young person between the ages of 9 and 13, we'd love to encourage you to be a part of our Pathfinders, you see? So you've got to communicate in a way that connects beyond just our Adventist audience, but in a way that connects to the people God has called us to reach. Can we say amen? So are we communicating in a way that connects? Then also, as we communicate, are we communicating just out there to people out there? Or are we, you know, to a group of people out there? Or are we communicating to specific individuals? So who are the people that we're trying to reach as we communicate? Uh, what if you created a profile and you said, for this press release or for this video, I'm targeting a single mom that's 35 years old. And I'm thinking about the challenges she's facing. And I'm thinking about the struggles she's going through. And so I'm going to communicate in a way that connects to her. There's four questions you should ask yourself before you produce anything, whether it's a press release, whether it's a video. You should ask yourself these four questions. And you can write these down. Number one, what is my message about? Look to your neighbor and say, what is my message about? Yeah, yeah, look to your other neighbor and say, what is my message about? What is my message about? Number two, why is it important? Yeah, why is it important? And number three, uh, what do I want them to do? As a result of hearing this message, hearing this press release, uh, seeing this video, seeing this ad, what do I want them to do? What's the call to action? And then number four, what is the single most important persuasive idea? They say if you can't say it in a sentence, you can't shout it in an hour. So what is the single most important persuasive idea? So we've got to communicate in a way that connects. What is my message about? Why is it important? What do I want them to do? And what is the single most important persuasive idea? 
So how do we engage in communication that connects? I would propose there's three ways to do that. We have to communicate with clarity, we have to communicate with creativity, and we have to communicate for change and lasting impact. So let's talk about communicating with clarity. Um, I love the saying by, um, um, it, it says, the single biggest problem of communication is the illusion that it has actually taken place. George Bernard Shaw says that. The single biggest problem in communication is the illusion that has actually taken place. So when we communicate, how clear are we in our communication? How clear are we being? And how clearly are we communicating in our communication? Because we need clarity in our communication. We need to communicate with clarity and with power and simplicity so that people understand our message. Can we say amen? It's, it's not enough to just communicate in a way that is, you know, just nebulous or just, you know, church speak, but we have to communicate in a way that's clear. And part of clarity is when we are communicating, we have to ask ourselves, um, would a 10-year-old understand this, right? Would uh, a child understand this? Would a high school student make sense of this? Um, would a college student get this or resonate with this? So how am I communicating? We have to communicate with clarity. Um, number two, we have to communicate with creativity. Uh, it's not enough to just communicate in a way that is... Uh, just the same boring, mundane way we've always done it. We have to communicate with creativity. So ask yourself, how can I be creative in my communication approach? How can I switch things up a little bit? All right? Um, so let me get back to point one. You see, to communicate with clarity, um, when you're communicating a message, it's essential to ensure that it is clear and understandable. This is especially important when you're communicating to people who may not be familiar with the terminology or jargon used in your field. So for example, suppose you're communicating a new program that your church is launching. Instead of using technical terms and language, try to use straightforward language that anyone can understand. This will help ensure that your message is received is received and understood by a wider audience. If you're still with me, say yes. All right, and number two is communicate with creativity. So the second point is that we have to communicate with creativity. You see, while it's important to be clear in our communication, we have to be creative in our communication because creativity will ultimately make our message stick and will make it engaging and more memorable. So for example, instead of simply sending out a newsletter or a newspaper uh, or an email about an upcoming event, try creating a short and engaging video that showcases the event and what attendees can expect. This will help you grab people's attention and make them more likely to attend the event. So we've got to communicate with creativity and there's something I like to use called the seven time rule of communication. And this says that anything you communicate, you have to communicate it at least seven different times in seven different ways, right? So you can't just communicate one time. You can't just say, okay, I've sent an email, I've put it on Facebook, and that's it. Think about the different audiences that you're trying to connect with because ultimately communication is all about connecting, and we need to have a Seventh-day Adventist communicators, communication that connects. So, you know, how am I going to connect with the grandmother that doesn't go on Facebook, that's never online? I may still need to get an auto dialer, and I may need to have a phone message dropped to her phone so that she can pick it up and hear, hey, we want to invite you to the upcoming ASI convention. And as a departmental director for ASI at the North American Division, that's one of the things we've started doing since I've come, is we send a phone message 
and it actually it actually comes to your phone, it rings once, and then it leaves a voice message, and you'll hear the voice. Hey, this is Andy Hunsaker, ASI president. I want to give you a personal invitation to come to the ASI convention. And people get excited. They're like, wow, the ASI president called me to invite me to come to ASI. Great. We're using technology, amen, to be able to leverage that because we're understanding that our older audiences, especially the people that give us money, some of them, uh, <laughs> some of our wealthy older folks, they're not on social media, and we still have to reach them. With the advancing of technology, we can't forget that some of them are still stuck with phones and with paper checks. Hello. And so we've got to still reach them and love them because we need those checks. Can we say amen? We need their support. Now, um, think about this. Um, so that would be one way of communicating, right, to your older audience, so if you're thinking about the seven-time rule of communication, it says anything you want to communicate, you need to communicate it seven different times in seven different ways. Okay, a phone voicemail message, that's another way. A text message campaign, that's a second way. So everyone gets a text message, great. All right, um, Facebook message, that's another way. Wonderful. Okay, that's three, right? Um, an email, so constant contact or MailChimp, that's another way. Okay, that's four. All right, um, a website. And, uh, you know, that's another way. That's five. Um, Instagram, video, all right? So create a video, a video promo, one maybe for Facebook, one for Instagram. And when people are on Facebook, when they're on Instagram, that video pops up and they're seeing a promo, an advertisement, a paid ad of that video. And now that's number six, right? Um, and, and, and let me say about video for a moment. The world has gone video. And the church is still stuck in print and in maybe just online. Uh, like, we, we, we like to do a lot of post, but we have to transition our post from just post to video. Because the world has gone video, and we have to get in that mindset, right? Um, so, you know, I created a video to promote the upcoming ASI convention and, you know, it's an ad, it's on Facebook, it's on YouTube, it's on Instagram. I think it now has about 80,000 views on YouTube. Can we say amen? And um, that just shows the power of video. And so we can't be afraid to run from using all of the technologies God has placed at our disposal to help spread the message. Amen? Um, don't forget letters. Letters still work. In the ASI office, we have, like I said, an older audience, and they like to receive letters. When they send in donations, uh, we, we, we print out a nice letter that I've written, but anyone that donates over $5,000, I handwrite a thank you note and send it in the mail. So we have to remember that uh, if we use a seven-time rule of communication, anything you want to communicate, you have to communicate it at least seven different times in seven different ways. So filter your communication strategy through that and ask yourself, have I communicated this seven different times in seven different ways? So remember, we're talking about communication that connects, right? And the first way to have communication that connects is to communicate with clarity. Everyone say clarity. Come on, say it louder. Say clarity. The second way to communicate in a way that connects is to communicate with creativity. Everyone say creativity. And how do we communicate with creativity? Part of that is not just using the seven-time rule and communicating seven different times in seven different ways, whatever we want to share. But secondly, we have to launch a strategic communication campaign. You can't just say, okay, I'm going to communicate something. Think about what Apple does. Every time Apple launches a new product, the day of the product, of course, they have the big convention and, uh, you know, the big expo, and everyone comes and attends. In fact, they just had the one last week, right? And I, I told my wife, I said, I'm going to have to try to find $3,500 somewhere to get those new glasses. Amen? 
Uh, yes, sir. I mean, I, I don't know about you, but I have to have it. If I told Alex Bryan, I said, can we find a way to work it in the budget? So, like, you know, as departmental directors, it could be part of the budget. He said, nah, I don't think so. But <laughs> I mean, at least, at least I tried, right? At least I tried. But here's the thing. There's a saying in marketing, don't push the product, pull the customer. Look to your neighbor and say, don't push the product, pull the customer. Yeah, look to your other neighbor and say, don't push the product, pull the customer. Touch the person next to you and say, pull me, don't push me. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, the problem is, like, see, Apple, for example, when they launch their campaign, right, when they launch a new iPhone, now with the new glasses, they have mastered the art of don't push the product, pull the customer. So they know how to pull you in, so you want to buy it, right? You want to buy it. But in the church, we're still on the push the product model, Right? So we're trying to push our program on people, and sometimes our communication approach is designed like that. When's the last time you've been to church, coming back to the basic now in a local church, when's the last time you've been to church and the elders called for the offering? And he says, will a man rob God? How have you robbed me in tithes and in offerings? And he's beating people over the head and guilting them into giving an offering. That's called pushing the product, but a better approach is to pull the customer. You see, guilt is a short-term effective plan for increasing giving, but vision is a much better long-term effective plan for increasing giving. And if we move from guilt to inspiring through a compelling, clear vision, we cannot push the product, but we can pull the customer and get much greater results. And what creates an inspiring, compelling vision? It is story. It is testimony. It is inspiring stories. And what do we as communicators do? We are the curators and the tellers of people's stories. That's what we do. We tell stories and we empower others to tell stories that inspire, that connect. And so... If we can remember to communicate with clarity, say clarity. With creativity, with, say creativity. Creativity, part of communicating with creativity is to use creative, compelling stories. Creative, compelling stories that can make a difference, stories that can teach. Um, and, and, and finally, we communicate for change. We communicate for change and lasting impact. And I'll end with this, with this uh, story. Um, you see, part of how we communicate for change is we remember that our communication is for a purpose. It's ultimately to win people to the kingdom of God. Can we say amen? And part of how we communicate for change is we recognize that we're not the only communicators in the house. Although we're educated and, you know, I have a degree in strategic communications and we have degrees, we, we, we're not the only communicators in the house.